ABC Today. Brian Seitel with you this Tuesday. It is February the 6th and a uh, bit of a quiet day in markets. We uh, traded up this morning, maybe 50 points or so off the open following China's uh, move up overnight. There was uh, really not a lot of news there either, frankly, um, but with the market that's just had a tough go of it for the last two years, it's wiped out about $7 trillion worth of market cap. I just really think it was more of a bounce in an oversold condition, but there was some hint at maybe uh, a meeting with the president uh, there would uh, uh, solicit some uh, stimulus into the market. There was a sovereign wealth fund that bought some exchange traded funds there too. So again, not a lot of news, but the market in China was up 3%. So global markets uh, followed a little bit from from that. And, and most of our market action today was positive. We actually closed up 141 points on the Dow, which in percentage terms these these days is really not uh, a huge move, but uh, about a third of a percent roughly, but um, close to the highs uh, for the session. So uh, not all bad. NASDAQ even eked out basically a flat return, slightly positive on the day. So all in all, fairly uh, modestly positive trading on the day. Uh, not a lot of data out today. Um, there was, um, you know, a, a, a couple of Fed presidents speaking today, um, really just reiterating what Powell said last week. So there's uh, some follow through and in, in that rates need to stay longer here for a period of time to, to show more in, uh, proof in numbers and data that inflation is, in fact, at 2%. Um, one of the things I noted was, you know, with the slowdown in China, economically speaking, and market related, there has been less um, yuan, less uh, local currency to be recycled back into U.S. treasuries and the U.S. dollars. And so that percentage of ownership continues to, to decline in China. Um, and it's, it's notable just because there's, there's a good amount of supply coming this year. I say a good amount because there's about $10 trillion coming to the market in 2024 of new treasury issuance. There's an $8.9 trillion amount that's coming due or maturing. And then with deficits that are gonna be somewhere north of a trillion, you get to that $10 trillion mark of, of new issuance for 2024. It's just a lot to absorb. You have, you have things like you know long dated maturities, long dated liabilities like pension accounts, um, retirement accounts, uh, insurance companies that need to fund those obligations with long traded, uh, long dated treasuries. And so there is demand there. And I suspect it'll get sopped up in global markets without an issue. But it's just a lot of supply to think about with the world's largest buyer of buying less, which is which was historically has, has been China. Um, they, uh, you know, they're dealing with a really, uh, a real estate bubble, you know, that is the best way I can describe it. It's an over levered, over invested, over built real estate market in China, and that is deflating. And as we know here in the U.S., a deflating real estate market can be very difficult in financial conditions. That's what we went through in the financial crisis. It's frankly what Japan went through in the 80s as well that lasted for, you know, 30 years, essentially. Um, so we'll see how those things play out in that big economy, the world's second largest economy. Um, in the U.S., with that issuance, you know, interest expense, uh, for this country, um, as we issue those treasuries, is now doubled. It was $350 billion and we're at about $700 billion, which is about 17% of total intake of about $4 trillion or so into the government coffers. But all in all today, lower volatility day. The VIX is hovering in the low 13s. Um, so we're sort of getting through this. Um, the, um, the new section today I thought was, uh, was nice that David put in there. It was what's on David's mind. And he'll just write something that pops in or that he's thinking about or something that he's dealing with or, or working on for the day um, to be included in these write-ups for the day. So it's it's instead of just being a one or the other, it's an and for as far as both of us reporting on these uh, daily market moves. But he talked a little bit about Facebook's dividend announcement and how that doesn't necessarily put it on the radar of our dividend growth portfolio. Um, it's nice to see them doing that uh, because there's an, an amount of cash that they have where they can do that. They can return some of that to capital to shareholders. But it really is just a 0.4% yield at this point. And it's not really just that, uh, although that in and of itself being about a third of what the S&P is would be enough to stay off of our screens. But it's more internal management um, commitment to, to an ethos of growing a, a cash flow stream to shareholders 
It just doesn't really exist yet. I still think it's a positive, and, and David wrote this as well, for the overall sector in technology to be returning some uh, capital, and not just in the form of share buybacks, but in the, in the form of dividends. So we'll see if that's a trend that continues. And overall, I suspect it's a positive thing, but but it isn't something that we have uh, uh, geared to go into the into our portfolio anytime soon. Um, you know, there was a survey, there's a Fed survey out about um, um, uh, lending standards in the country. It's it's a uh, senior loan officer survey that um, is not honestly really that widely followed, but it did show a slightly tightening lending environment in fourth quarter, uh, mainly in commercial real estate, which I think most would intuitively guess, non-GSC backed uh, residential real estate loans, uh, and then credit cards. And really, you know, that stuff is just because rates have gone up so much, it, it's it's to be expected that you'd have a lower demand and then uh, more scrutiny from banks and a little bit tighter lending standards for 2024 that's expected to, to resume, um, particularly with rates coming back down a little bit. I put an Ask Brian section in there today. Um, very simple question, and it's a very simple answer, really, which is, I get asked this a lot. There's a lot of inbound interest coming into the Bonson Group on a daily basis. Of, of folks out there hearing about us and wanting to be clients. And it's just a common question, you know, tell me about a, a typical portfolio. And I can talk about qualitative things of how we manage money and, and those sort of, sort of things. But when you just, when there's a simple question about uh, that I got you know, about asset allocation, there just isn't a predetermined and a preset answer to that. We design each allocation specific to each client. So you just get a wide range of variability. Some clients that have 100% in stocks, some have, you know, uh, close to 100% an alternative type of investments based on other things they have going on in, in their in their life and, and other holdings, frankly. Um, so all, all that to say, um, a little little answer, a Q&A session there on something that's, that's asked all the time. Tomorrow, I'll be with you back on DC today, as I will on Wednesday also. And that'll be sort of, or Thursday, forgive me, uh, as well. And that'll be sort of our, our normal cadence that we'll get into with these things and I'm excited about it. So uh, I, with that, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate your reading as I always do. I encourage you to reach out with your questions and have a wonderful night. Thank you.